Hey everybody, welcome to Brickboard, my name is Mike and welcome to another Top 10 Mogs video. This week around I think we have a good selection, a number of awesome Mudra buildings, ships, uh, the actual ships on water, a number of sci-fi stuff and there is also a mech, so without further ado, let's get into it. As always guys, I'm leaving all the links to the creations below in the video description. If you want to check out the Flickr pages and uh, the designers and what they are up to with their other work, be sure to check out those links. And number 10 is from a well-known builder, Dioxon, and he's coming with not one, but two mocks that I really like this week. Those are the two monsters. The first one is called Chromog the Defiler, and second one is Black Find Grugfish. Dioxon is mostly known to us as a character builder. He has a very original set of characters on his Flickr page, and he's known also for using a lot of hero factory pieces and a lot of bionicle parts as well. And every time he comes with a build, there is something special about it, either the shape or the color combination, and this time around I think we have both again. The fish is looking ridiculous, like a cartoon character with an oversized mouth or just a jaw. Looks great and the use of those uh, curves in green just adds to this very curvy and slick looking but at the same time pretty scary look. The second guy, the Chromaug, is more of a mag build and it looks like a, maybe a character from Lord of the Rings or some sort of a lore like that and he comes with great use for a hero factory helmet and uh, a lot of armor pieces plus this massive Morgenstern weapon that he's holding in his left hand. I love every single build of Dioxon, so check his Flickr page to see more cool characters. Pretty much every single one of them is different. And with number 9 we are moving into a very likable microscale building. Those are two builds from Alego Alego. I couldn't choose the one that I really liked the most, so I chose to include both of them. That being said, the darker one is called just Micro Castle, and the more fairy one is called Micro Castle Princess. And first I want to focus on, let's call it the dark Micro Castle, and this one is really astonishing with the use of a single piece that makes up the shade, that is the Six Shooter Rapid Barrel. A piece that is often seen in Next Night's builds and a lot of those rapid shooting weapons in Lego sets. And with the addition of a simple drill from I think Power Minders and some other Technic pieces, plus stairs made of the jumper pieces, we have a pretty complete look of a dark castle. That is probably one of the best uh, micro builds I have seen this year with the use of a very few pieces. It just catches the all the details and everything that you really require for a micro scale build perfectly. The next one was taken previously but I think it is worth mentioning in this episode because this one also is using some special pieces to achieve the look and this time around we have the use of a lot of minifigure torsos or pieces that are used on their torsos. Uh, like the slide jacket for entrance and some even I think friends torsos that are in the back making up part of this massive tower. I think there is also the torso or skirt from friends making up the top of it and uh, given the base plate with prints from I think juniors Disney sets for um, you know the smaller children that makes up for a very fairy tale-ish look. These are pretty awesome examples of some good micro scale building and I hope Alego Alego will have more to come in the future. Okay, but we had some castles, now we we'll move in the future. And with the coming Blade Runner movie, I think this mock is really fitting this week. This is the Blade Runner 1849 by Jonas Crown, one of the very well-known designers to us. Jonas has a pretty excellent track record with his mocks. We mentioned a number of them in our episodes. This one is the newest one and boy, I think it captures the upcoming movie vibe pretty nicely. The movie that I'm really waiting for is featuring Han Solo, I mean, Harrison Ford, of course, is featuring those steampunkish meets sci-fi vehicles. And I'm not sure where Jonas took this design from, but it looks like something taken from the old Blade Runner with mix-up of the new design that will be available in the upcoming movie. Plus, of course, some 1849 steampunk touch to it. The use of ice cream pieces for steam or exhaust fumes is pretty common and it is used very well in this set. I also like some angling and detailing with the combination of dark blue and black and brown colors that make up the main shape of the hole. As you can see, there is some tentacle pieces used for the detailing of those uh, lines running along the body of the vehicle. This is a pretty awesome little mock. I just could not exclude it being a biased fan of the upcoming movie, that's for sure. Number seven is something from the seven seas. Well, not entirely, but this is a matter of simple math. That's the title of this mock. 
and is a collaboration between Sebeus and Captain Greenhair, two massive ships battling each other on the open seas. What I like the most about this smoke is not only the photography, but the dynamic scene that three pictures from the Flickr page are actually portraying. We can see the initial start of the battle, and then we can see as the battle goes on, some fire on one of the decks of the ship, some broken masts and broken sails, and eventually one of them gets defeated with a huge damage to the entire hull. But as I'm rambling about the entire scene, we should really appreciate the details that both of these ships have. Those come from, again, two builders, and those could be an excellent LEGO set, being a big fan of the old pirate ship set and the for example, the Queen Anne's Revenge, that was one of the best ships ever made, and even the Silent Mary, I would love to see such thing return in its full glory with such level of detail. Moving on, I think number 6 is a good spot for my every week mech. This time around we have nothing too crazy or original, this is Bumblebee from Transformers by Caesar Soares. And let me just say this, this must be one of the best looking Bumblebees I have seen so far, and we are talking about Bumblebee uh, portrayed in the Transformers Michael Bay movies. I think that was a good version of this guy, one of the comic reliefs of all uh, movie franchise, and this one comes with a vignette stand and a lot of awesome connections and awesome parts to make up for this highly detailed look that Michael Bay got us used to. The only downside is that I think the model is not really possible. I think the stand is made just to keep this guy in one position. It's more like a collectible figure than an actual playable model, but I think it does pay off because the guy looks excellent. I love especially the build for his head and all those armor panels in orange contrasting with these mechanical pieces in dark and light gray make up for a great looking transformer. If only he could turn into his uh, Camaro car, that would be great, but otherwise I'm still thinking that would be a sweet thing to have in every cool collector's desk. Number 5 is a modular building, at least I think it is, it looks more like a vignette or a diorama, but it's called A Little Corner of Italy by Luca Di Lazaro. And this one is high up the list because I just love detailed modular buildings and this one is no different, especially the street level that has a lot of gravel and special um, detailing for the pathway, also a lot of cool looking uh, plants and foliage uh, just growing on the buildings I guess, that's a usual look you see in Italy if you go to any big Italian city and also the likes of the walls and the contrast with the different types of windows and window blinds make up for this great, very uh, warm looking Italian afternoon scene. Luca has used some amazing photography to catch this vibe, this great mellow feeling to the set and I think it paid off. I immediately want to have it, I'm not sure how detailed it is inside but the interiors just sold me to it. So there you go, a beautiful Italian scenery in a massive modular building. Number 4 is another modular, I just happened to have a luck of finding two great modulars this week and this one is called Old Chinese Buildings by CK Ho. Again, we have the use of a high quality photography to create a great atmosphere around the set and I think the whole thing resembles kind of the famous Ninja Go City, at least in looks and because it's cubicle and quite high but also in atmosphere and the amount of detail that was put into it. A number of awesome touches was put into this set, especially the Asian signs that are hanging here and there, adding to this Ninja Go city-like look, and also the cars that were used have those small wheels that are usually visible on those uh, busy Asian trucks, for example. I think that looks great, and even the designer um, liked this set so much, I guess, that he created a micro version of him, a mini version of him, that is uh, also placed along his other modulars that he created before. I think it looks great and it just tells me that this building could be a great line for modulars only if we didn't have a Ninjago City as we have already now. Alright, moving to the top 3, number 3 is from one of my favorite designers ever, Inthurt, his uh, Star Wars uh, mocks are always having a special place in my heart I have to say. And this one is called Star Wars Ring Worlds, that's a theme he was working on for a while now, a deadly ascent on death. That is one of the planets that was not visible in the original canon trilogy, but it is uh, kind of a tricky one, wait for it. There you go, he was doing a perspective shot to show the ascent of two ATT East walkers on a rocky terrain, and I think it looks better when it's actually, uh, you know, horizontal. Anyway, as I mentioned, this build is part of a series, Inthard is known for creating those ring worlds, and those ATT walkers look awesome, I never seen a good uh, a build as good as that one in any of those micro scale builds, 
looks awesome. We have also some dynamics uh, like this explosion underneath one of them. He is always known for creating such things in his small mocks. And uh, those panels like tearing apart through the explosion. And the actual detail of such a small build of the very good looking ATT walker is simply astonishing. The foliage here and there on this rocky terrain just adds to the scene and I think there is nothing else you can add it to make it possibly better. Excellent build in Heart, and I really would uh, love to see more of you, more of these builds in the Star Wars Ring Worlds series. Number two is a vignette and also including some ships. This is Aryan of Dakota and his Patterson Seafood Corporation. This one is a massive base plate uh, portraying a piece of a lake or a sea wharf, whatever that is, but I think it's just a local uh, fishing wharf with two great trawlers for uh, fishing purposes, that is, of course, and something that looks even better than the Ideas Old Fishing Store, I think. This set actually would go great with this small vignette, but it's just all custom, and wow, the amount of details, I keep saying that, but this is just amazing and he even added the night version of it with the added addition of lights uh, to every single ship uh, in this vignette and even the buildings on the wharf uh, this is i mean just just amazing you should check out the Flickr page to see work in progress and all the high resolution pictures to just witness every single detail in this amazing creation i was so happy to put this on the number two this list Okay, and as we are closing to September, or just in the middle of September actually, we should include a proper ship for number one spot. And I was looking for something epic for this one, and I was so glad that Marcin Grabowski, one of the Polish mock builders that I was, I am a big fan of, came up with this thing. This is the Dragonfly class dropship by Marcin Grabowski, of course. And this is something wow that I never seen before. This is a special shape of ship, looking like a dragonfly to be honest. And the color combo with the bright green and the yellow color combinations is working wonders. I mean, this is something that I would not even come up with with my wildest ideas, uh, I guess. And uh, well, Martin just built it and it took him at least 29 days to complete. So that is a perfect Shimtember application. Plus, if you go to his Flickr page, you can definitely check out these images in high detail and maybe compare the size of this massive set to a cat. Alright guys, and that is it for the top 10 mocks for this week. That was a tough selection, I think this was a high quality week and I was having hard time to actually choosing the right order. But I think Martin's creation with the special ship is actually worth it to grab the highest trophy for this week. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, remember tomorrow is Monday, so that means we are getting your fan mocks creation video. That is right, we are splitting those videos into a separate one, so fan mocks are receiving their own video. And remember, you can keep submitting your mocks to the email visible on the screen. And also, please, please follow the rules uh, that are mentioned in the description below because that helps us out and allows us to put those mocks in a proper fashion and show your pictures with a proper respect. So I hope you guys uh, are going to be enjoying that. Thanks again so much for watching. My name is Mike and I'll see you again on Brick Vault. Yeah.